Hey everybody, this is Dave and today I'm sitting in the back seat of my 2012 Grand Caravan watching my brand new Apple TV 4. The Apple TV 4 is a great media streaming box to put in your car because now we have an app store that we can download entertainment apps as well as games to keep your rear seat passengers entertained. We also have the Bluetooth Siri remote which allows you to put your Apple TV anywhere in your car, whether it's the glove box, the trunk, or under a seat, without having to worry about inline of sight, meaning you don't have to point your remote at an IR receiver on your Apple TV, because now it all works with Bluetooth. With the latest iOS firmware and devices, you can also airplay your iOS screen and media to your Apple TV without having to worry about having a router in your car and having an internet connection. It's called direct airplay or peer-to-peer -peer, and it makes it so much easier to install an Apple TV 4 in your car. So with a combination of different hardware I'm going to show you how I got this to work in my car as well as show you some demos. I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get started. Okay, I have my dash opened up so I could show you my setup. Now this is the MyGig radio and in the back here it has a gray connection and a white connection. So what you do is you take this lock pick and this is, I bought from Coastal E-Tech. Uh, they have a whole bunch of new stuff. This is a couple of years old and what it does is it allows you to input a video from the Apple TV. Of course we're gonna have to convert it from HDMI to RCA and I'll show you that in a second but uh, it also has an iPod for the old iPod connections. Uh, that's the 30 pin that you have here back in the old days. I just converted it over to the lightning cable uh, but it doesn't do video so it only does the audio but I still use it because I used to um, up in my screen here I had a holder and it holds my iPhone and I was able to do the navigation through here and get the audio through the uh, sound system. But now I decided, let's put the Apple TV in here. Now, this is the harness here that connects into this uh, motherboard here. Just think of it that way. And uh, here is the output. This outputs a video uh, to that rear uh, entertainment system, the VES. So I have that wire running to the back and plugged into the VES. Uh, this harness here that comes with the lockpick uh, goes up through and what it does is you disconnect these two connections here and you bypass it uh, with the lockpick. So in other words the lockpick pick sits in between the wiring in the car and the radio and it will uh, bypass it to the lockpick. So that you're able to get uh, video in motion meaning you can have the car in drive and still see the screen, uh, whatever is connected to the input uh, on here. And you'll be able to um, output it to the rear screen. You, ha get, you can have uh, you know, the RCA connections into the lockpick so that you can uh, connect devices or you know, like uh, VCRs and, and all the other stuff. But in this case, I did the Apple TV. So that's the bypass. And you can also connect like rear cameras and things like that and all different stuff. And then once you turn on the unit, uh, once it's all plugged in and you turn the car on, there's a new tab that shows up and I'll show you that in a little bit. And this is just the perfect way to bypass all the restrictions that it has on here. Because, you know, the, these radios here, they don't have an HDMI in and they don't have an RCA in. They don't have any in that you can put into the, uh, into the radio. To in your car. So you, I had to buy this lockpick in order to have inputs and outputs of uh, various kinds so the Apple TV can run. Now, as far as the Apple TV and converting HDMI to RCA, let me show you that. Now, CoastalETech.com has a lot of new devices. Um, I'm going to check it later and see if they actually have an HDMI uh, input that goes into the lockpick. So this is my setup down here. Now what I have down here, and it may be hard to see, is I have a inverter and it inverts AC to DC. And then you take this and you plug it into your cigarette lighter. And it allows you to have uh, two household plugs. 
So I plug in the converter. Now this converts HDMI into RCA, as you can see it here. And then the RCA goes into the lockpick that I have in my car. I have the Apple TV, it's plugged in, getting power uh, from the inverter. And the HDMI runs right into this converter that converts uh, HDMI to RCA. So that's all connected in. Uh, the only wire that runs to the lockpick is the RCAs. The RCA runs into the lockpick lock pick input. So it inputs right in through the top here. And now you'll be able to see the Apple TV on the screen. And then, like I said, I use the, the uh, output of the lockpick to output the Apple TV that's on the screen to the rear of the car. And then it gets plugged in to here, back here. So now I have them both, um, both screens, and I'm going to put my dash back together again, tuck everything away, and then I'm going to show you how it is when you start your car, what it involves. Now there's two ways to have an Apple TV in your car. The best way is to have a tethering plan on your iPhone uh, so that you could tether your internet connection to it, and that will allow you to update all your games, because you know when you install a game on the Apple TV, when you first turn the game on, you have to go on the internet, connect, download new material. If you want to use Plex, you want to use uh, Netflix and all that stuff, you're going to have to have an internet connection. Now, the second way to use the Apple TV in your car is to have an iPhone that you can AirPlay. Now, don't forget the new uh, software on the iOS device, iOS 8 and iOS 9, allows you to do a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection to your Apple TV so there's no internet needed at all uh, once the games are updated of course and you bring the Apple TV into your car you can play those games in the car as well so I have tethering on my phone and I'll be able to uh, turn that on uh, easily by just going into settings it's a jailbreak app uh, that I use and it shows up here in settings and it's called tether me and I also have the uh, other app that I purchased from Cydia is called MyY, and I could use either MyY or TetherMe. Uh, I like to use TetherMe because it's simple. Uh, we just click it here and we turn it on. You set up a password, and then you uh, turn on your Apple TV, go to settings, and then you connect to your iPhone um, the tethering. So you can use your LTE and your um, 4G to uh, get internet to your Apple TV. Now the good thing about AT&T now is they use the throttle, uh, meaning after you went over a certain amount of gigabytes of data, they used to throttle you down to 4G and it was ho so horrible that you couldn't even play a video over the internet. Uh, you see here now it says one connection. That's because my Apple TV just connected to it automatically. Uh, so now the Apple TV has uh, internet connection. So now, uh, AT&T, because of the FCC, they have to give you 24 gigabytes uh, before they start slowing your connection down. So that's great. Uh, it's so hard to use 24 gigabytes. Even if you play video from the internet, YouTube or Netflix or whatever, all day long for a whole month straight, you don't even come close to that 24 gigs. Thank God I was grandfathered into having an unlimited plan. Um, and then with the new rule with the 24 gigs, I'm able to use internet connection. But don't worry, I'm going to show you what it's like to use your iOS to mirror to the Apple TV so that you could just run everything off your phone uh, without having Tether Me or that other uh, tethering uh, data plan. So let's get started. Let me show you what a power up is like. And uh, you saw all the connections and now we're going to move on to turning it on. Okay, so the first thing you want to do when you get in the car, this is the option if you have a tethering uh, personal hotspot from your phone, is you want to go into settings and you want to turn on your personal hotspot. You find that in settings. Uh, so now we have a uh, hotspot broadcasting. So now we're going to turn on the uh, car and the Apple TV, the inverter and that converter, as well as the radio and the lockpick. It all gets turned on when you turn the key. So we'll go ahead, turn it on. You heard that ding, that's the inverter. And now it will uh, power up the radio. 
Now it's updating the channel. I can hit view video. I'm not going to see anything until that update of the lockpick updates that channel and finds the inputs for the Apple TV. Now the Apple TV is already booting up. And it's already booted. Uh, once this shows, you're going to the Apple TV is going to beat the lockpick into booting up. Now you're booted up and you're ready to go. Now you see on the phone, it's got personal hotspot at one connection up at the top. And we're going to grab our Siri remote. Now, Siri remote falls asleep uh, when the Apple TV is powered off completely. So if you move around the Apple TV, it's not going to work. Just basically got to click on it, and it's going to wake up the Bluetooth connection. And now you're going to be able to move your uh, Siri remote around. So that auto connects as well as connecting to the Internet. Now, if we go to settings and we go down to network, you'll see... Uh, that I'm connected to my iPhone. I'm, t I'm off the tethering uh, of the uh, LTE and 4G connection. All right, so now we have a full-fledged Apple TV in the car with internet. Uh, you can go to iTunes. You can purchase stuff. Uh, nothing different from when you're inside your house. You can, you know, play, uh, open up Plex uh, because you can set Plex up to go over the internet. It's going to connect to my NAS at home and it's going to search. Uh, it takes a little bit to load up the artwork. Not too bad, though. Uh, and you go down, and you can just start playing all your movies that you have stored on your mass storage, you know, your NAS. So I can click on any one of these, and like this, and I can just go and play the video uh, no problem at all. It's using my phone's internet connection. So it's going to work beautifully. Um, the best way to keep your AirPlay set up I'll show you that in a second. Let me just load this video. It's loading it from my NAS in my home network over the internet and into the Apple TV. So now we're watching that. All right, so let's just go home, and I'm going to show you AirPlay. Now, everything works as expected. You play a game. It has to load additional content. It will load. It will use your internet connection. Um, the only difference is if you're going to try to do apps like these that have DLNA, obviously you're not home and your your server uh, or your NAS is not connected to the same internet because you're on the iPhone's internet. Um, so anything you want to use, you can use it. That's fine. Now, when you have a tethering connection, the best way to set AirPlay is to set it up with AirPlay, not AirPlay mirroring. Uh, this is AirPlay, and you can hit Apple TV 4, and you can mirror your screen uh, as well. But there are some apps that uh, want you to mirror the screen, and there are certain apps uh, that don't want you to mirror your screen. So I found out the best way is to turn off mirroring and now use your iOS device whatever way you want. Now you want to load up and you want to watch uh, YouTube, okay? So you watch YouTube and you, you want to watch a video. So we'll load up one of my videos here. Um, we'll just play this one here. And it will AirPlay now. I have it set to AirPlay, right? Right here. I have it set to AirPlay without mirroring. Hello, everybody. So you now it's AirPlaying without mirroring. And the best thing about AirPlaying without mirroring is that you can close your uh, your app, your YouTube app, and it will continue to play on your Apple TV because you have the internet connection. Um, it's going to be a little bit different when you don't have a tethering app or anything like that because you're going to have to mirror everything. And I'll show you that in a second. So now you can go to other apps. You can, you know, look at your emails or do whatever. Now, if you have it on mirroring, uh, I'll show you that now. If you have it on mirroring, and now you're mirroring your screen, you can um, turn your iPhone sideways with the 6 Plus. It rotates the icons and everything, and that's nice. Now let's show you YouTube. So now we'll hit YouTube, and it'll start playing. And But the problem is if you turn off your phone... It will also turn off the mirroring of that video and you'll get back to your screen that's common sense it's the same way in your home it's no different now let's use this scenario now um, also like apps like this all right so if you go into Netflix and right now we're mirroring um, it's gonna work it's it's, it's gonna you know show the the videos and everything so I'm gonna just do continue watching and it's gonna show me the video there and like I said if you close out 
uh, the app on your phone, it will close it out on the Apple TV. I'm not going to wait for it to load. I'm just going to uh, um, just, you know, go on with the review. So we have that. Now, if I was to go and turn off mirroring, okay, and I hit Netflix, then it will, it will work. It will sh stream the video. And then when you close out the app, it will still continue to stream. So like I said, AirPlay non-mirroring is the best way to go when you have a tethering plan. Now, let's use now a different scenario. We're going to turn off our um, we're going to turn off our tethering. Now, these are for people who don't want to eat through their data or they don't have tethering on their phone. Uh, they want to, you know, shut it off like this. Now you're not tethering it. You're not uh, you're not having an internet connection from your phone anymore. So now, when you go into apps, say for instance, uh, it says it has a network problem because there is no internet. So now when you go up to iTunes, say, for instance, and you want to see the latest, uh, you know, things that are out, it's not going to work. You go into the app store and you try to play, uh, you know, try to, to look for apps. It's going to give you an error message that you have no Internet connection. So basically now all you're going to use this uh, Apple TV for is as an AirPlay receiver. Okay, keep in mind that my iPhone is not connected to any Wi-Fi network. The Apple TV uh, Wi-Fi not connected, so nothing's connected. There's no router in the car, and there's no uh, Wi-Fi connection. But now you're going to see here that I can swipe up, and I can hit um, AirPlay, and you see the Apple TV 4 show up on the list there. That wasn't possible before iOS 8 and iOS 9. So I'm going to hit this, and it's going to be on mirroring, and you're going to see it mirror to the screen. So that's the good news. At least we can get. Uh, the iOS uh, screen on there. So I'm going to hit done and I'm going to show you uh, the icons rotate and you got your screen on there. Now unfortunately because of Apple restrictions they will not allow you to play YouTube from here or uh, you know other things like uh, Amazon and Netflix from here and cast it or airplay it right over to your screen. You can't do it. The only thing you can do is that you can go into your camera roll and you can send camera roll video over to the uh, Apple TV with AirPlay and AirPlay mirroring and then you hit it and it starts playing. I could fast forward through it. I'll show you. So it's playing through or whatever. Okay. Uh, the other thing is you can also use your uh, iTunes app uh, right here this one here to play whatever video you stored on your device I don't have anything on it because I use infuse uh, infuse is a great app because you can throw all your videos on um, this device it actually puts the file on the device in any format and you could play it through the infuse app so I have the infuse app here I downloaded uh, you know a bunch of TV shows and movies and stuff and I threw them on here uh, with file sharing in iTunes and also the uh, servers show up in a list because they're uh, DLNA and uh, it makes it easy and I have a video about this but uh, so I'm gonna hit play I'm gonna turn the device sideways <clears throat> and we're able to play anything that's stored on the device so keep that in mind alright so I'm gonna close this out and now, ultimately, uh, if you don't have a lot of hard drive space on your phone and you want to be able to uh, take a large movie collection with you because you're on a long ride or whatever, uh, but you only got like one gig left on your phone, you can use something like this. And I'm going to show you this right now. Um, this is a device here called the Mobile Light device, and it has a... Uh, a USB so that you could stick a hard drive on it right now I have a thumb drive uh, with one movie on it but I can hook a, like a a, um, a portable hard drive to it and it will actually um, you know you could fill up that hard drive with movies and any kind of format uh, I have an MK uh, MKV on here one movie but I'm gonna show it to you now so basically this device is a battery backup it's a hard drive uh, because you put the thumb here uh, that's the hard drive 
and then it has Wi-Fi in it. So it, it actually will transmit a Wi-Fi signal. Um, and then what you can do is you take that Wi-Fi and you connect to it. All right, so let's go back to the Apple TV. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn off AirPlay mirroring for a second and go right back to the phone. And let's go back to um, Wi-Fi here, and we're going to connect both devices uh, to Mobile Killer. That's the name of the Wi-Fi that's inside the, the box that I have here. So I connect to that. I don't have a password set up, so it, it just connects right to it. And on the Apple TV, I'm going to connect to it right here. And now we're connected uh, to the Mobile Killer and Mobile Killer. So now what I can do is this. I can go put my, you know, I don't need to connect Mobile Killer to this. Uh, but I can go here and connect to Mobile Killer Wi-Fi. And now I can go to my home screen. And I can use the brand new Infuse app that just came out yesterday. And I can click that. And because it's the, the Apple TV is connected to the Wi-Fi, I can actually go into settings. I can go into shares and it will show up as mobile light here. So now the Apple TV is using this device as a hard drive and I could throw two terabytes of stuff on here. So I can go to mobile light, click that, and then there's a USB connected to it. That's the USB that's on here. And I can click, oops, sorry. I can click here and I can add it as a share, uh, which I already did. Uh, well, let me remove it, and I'll show you. So I can add favorite. It finds the USB that's connected to that hard drive slash Wi-Fi router slash battery backup, uh, so to, you could charge your phone with it. And I got Supergirl on there. You see it? Uh, that's what's on that thumb. So now I can go back and say I had hundreds of movies. I can go and use them. So I can add a favorite, and I can use uh, the, the click here, and I save that as a favorite so now when I go back I'm gonna go back hit the back button here and back again and back again and then I go to movies right if I go to my sh save share the USB there goes uh, there goes Supergirl I have Supergirl in there as an MKV now I can play that and it'll actually look up uh, the um, the metadata for me it probably has a database inside I don't know what how it found it without internet but now it's going to play right here on my no. screen and also my rear screen. Hero. Let me just pause that. So if you think about it, if you don't have a lot of hard drive space, you can use one of these, charge your phone, or pop the, the drive in, the two terabyte drive into this with tons of movies on it in any format. Connect the Wi-Fi that's being transmitted from this uh, to the Apple TV. Let the Apple TV find the Wi-Fi in here. And you can use Infuse and play all your videos. So that's another option. Now, before you totally lose faith in Apple, uh, there is an exception to the rule. A audio. Apple treats audio differently than it does video. So you can see I'm not connected to the Wi-Fi at all in here. I have my LTE that I'm using. Now, I have a whole bunch of music apps that I'm going to open up now. And I'm going to show you that it works on the Apple TV. We'll go to the home screen here. And I have it on AirPlay, uh, just regular AirPlay, non-mirroring, okay? Using my LTE. And I'm going to open up an app like Spotify. Now, Spotify is here, and I'm going to hit play. Because I have it AirPlay to the Apple TV, it's going to play right there on the Apple TV. Let's skip a song and go to the next song. And you're going to see it show up in the corner here that it's playing lower the volume and so air playing of music apps is not a no-no uh, you can also have it on mirroring too if you want it and you get a little bit of an artwork up here uh, that shows up there which is I guess nice you know so you can see what's playing if you have it, your phone tucked away let's try Pandora and see what Pandora does so we got a song playing here on Pandora and if I actually come out of mirroring I, and I just keep it as airplay and I'll skip a song of course there's gonna be advertisement and look the advertisement shows up as a video
Does that make sense? Uh, because I'm using a music app, it doesn't have that restriction. Uh, so if there's a jailbreak tweak that can uh, disable these restrictions, then we'll be good to go. So we're going to hit AirPlay, Apple TV 4, and we're going to hit play. And it will be playing in the background and playing right there on your Apple TV. So you can have music apps play without an internet connection or a router in your car or whatever. It's called AirTunes, and that's what Apple officially calls it. Unfortunately, you can't play those videos uh, from the internet. Uh, you have to use the tethering plan uh, or have tether me or, you know, the my why or whatever you have to play full-fledged stuff on here and airplay stuff from the internet. So I hope you understand that, um, you know, you could still play games and stuff like that. You know, all, all the games that don't really require uh, much of an internet, um, like if I wanted to play, uh, you can actually even play like this game here. Uh, Oh, see, it's downloading a bundle. It, it probably already had it. It's loading, and we, we're not going to be able to play this um, if it's got to download stuff. But if it doesn't, we, we can just play it and play it and play it and go next. And and the kids can get entertained, you know? They, they you know, you turn the remote sideways and you start to play. And uh, there's surround sound, so you hear it in all four of the six speakers that I have in the car. And you can race and play the game. So I'm playing the game here. And this is without an internet connection, because there's no additional material that needed to be downloaded. Okay, of course you're going to want to install the game when you're home in your Wi-Fi network. I'll pull the car up to the Wi-Fi and download the game and make sure all the updates and then you can play for a while until the next update uh you know there's uh, two bit games too you know like like this one spin sport and you could play that that's not a problem i'm telling you apple tv apple tv in the car is awesome uh you you know you can play games watch movies if you have a tethering that's the best way to go so i can this is a great game by the way and you could just, you know, play. And if you have a second iOS device in the car, even without the Wi-Fi, you can join in the game and do two players. So you can have two players playing in the back, watching it on both screens, and it's great. So this has been my Apple TV in the car. If I missed anything, ask in the comments. I'll be happy to answer you. I hope you have a nice day, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.